Hi there, this is Nick and I'm broadcasting on the Get Me Off Grid video blog, which is a blog in which I'm basically telling you about my slow and steady progress towards uh, moving off grid, going towards self-sufficiency, using energy saving technology and the rest of it. Now, have a quick guess as to what's come through in the mail for me today. Grid tie inverter. Absolutely fantastic. It's the right power, it's the right voltage. My word is small. Just think about that. It's tiny. Okay, it's only for like 360 watt, as it says in the bottom corner there. Um, but this is only part of my first system, so I can get my first uh, first array of panels in place, uh, generating power for myself with this fantastic system. Uh, I've been down to the hardware shop and I bought myself some uh, weatherproof tape. I know that my sealant's work is going to be good, but on the other hand, I want to doubly check, okay, and so I'm going to cover it with tape as well. Uh, I got myself about 43 meters of worth of wire, which will be much more than enough to be able to do what I want to do to have panels on the east side and the west side of the building, because I'm not in the south-facing building, but I get some great direct sunlight in the early mornings and in the afternoons and evenings. So essentially, I want to exploit that at those two times of the day and not worry quite so much about uh, you know, midday uh, southerly direction, but I might create yet another panel and have it freestanding but angled towards the winter sun when the time comes. But it's going to be a laugh getting this thing arranged. I'll give you a, few, a full tour of the system. I'm waiting for a few blocking diodes to come through. Now, I'm not too sure whether you actually need to use blocking diodes if you're using a grid tie inverter. You definitely need them for, back for battery storage. But for grid tie, I'm not too sure, and I obviously don't want to blow up my panels and um, undo all the hours upon hours of work, painstaking work that I've done, uh, soldering the individual solar flakes together. Uh, I've had a bit of fun this morning preparing um, the hole. There's already a hole in the side of the property where um, the previous owner's satellite TV um, input came in. So instead of drilling more holes in the property, I thought I'd just use that one. So I've been poking a bit of wire through that. And I'm now going to nip outside and make sure it's all um, weather, weather sealed and insulated so there'll be no damage done to the property through rain and sleet and snow and hail in the winter. Um, so that'll be okay. And then, hey presto, we're only like... Um, a day or two away from me being able to cover cost of my lights or at least a part of it through solar power so totally cool you can just about see the hole in the wall that was already there from the previous user's sky outlet and I've taken the cowling off it shoved the cable through with the help of a metal spike and the wires going all the way around there okay around to the other side of the building Wires now coming down there, as you can see it, all the way along there to this beast here. Now I've got a few temporary things, don't worry about the tape that's on it, that's just a belt and braces thing because I know that my ceiling is pretty damn good all the way around. Just want to make sure it's doubly secure. Uh, I just soldered that on this morning to make sure that you know we'd have um, 24 volt and not 12. Uh, and yeah, we currently just got clips there, but I'm going to change that and upgrade that shortly. So, there we go. The sunlight is not actually completely on the panel at this present point in time. But the basic fact of the matter is it's generating power. There is the grid tie inverter. You can tell it's generating power when those green lights are moving one, two, three. And it's not only generating power, but pumping it into the grid as we speak. Wow. So the bottom line is, with not much money at all, but with reasonable cash flow and a bit of dedication and time, I've made myself my own small-scale power station. And I think that's kind of amazing. Hi there, Nick here yet again. Um, just want to give you a final bit of feedback. Um, about the grid tie inverter. What I did was I turned everything off that was on standby and I even turned the refrigerator off for a little while just to see what would happen. And I had a look at the electric meter and it was visibly going round quite fast backwards. So essentially if I didn't have the fridge and I was doing an awful lot more 
uh, that didn't require, let's say, the computer, I could actually reduce my bills totally. Okay, if I only use electricity when I needed it, I could probably be able to survive on, like, uh, you know, just using a little bit here and then paying it back in via the solar panel, using a bit, paying it back. I might even be able to get by on, like, a, you know, a zero cost, which is pretty amazing. Think about it. Don't just sit there, okay? Make yourself some panels, seriously. This is like amazing stuff. And if you get a good system which you've designed yourself based upon what you've researched on the internet, it, it could be amazing. Okay, you need to maybe change a few things in your life as well. Do you really need to leave so many things on standby and so many little sockets turned on? No, of course you don't. Switch them off. Anything you don't need, properly don't need, switch the damn things off. And basically, you can do it. You can actually do it. You can even sell power back to the grid with something that you've made out of reclaimed parts. To the most part, anyway. Think about that. It's mind-blowing. Totally and utterly, completely mind-blowing. Do it. Especially if you're a homeowner, okay? Especially if you, you know, you've got responsibilities to your family, your children. Do it.